Hi, Eric Gibault, ericgibault.com, and today, thanks to Photosura, I'm going to present you the Fujifilm X-E4. Let's start. Many people have been asking me, uh, please do a review of the X-E4 when it comes out. So it's been out like something like a month only. So I, found, I already have it. So thanks to Photosura for giving me, my, giving me, lending me one to do the review. So I'm really happy about it. So I'm, I'm going to speak about uh, the camera, the features. I'll show you some pictures and some videos, not that many. And you'll know why straight away. Why? Because uh, this camera is a... Uh, uh, on interchangeable lens camera, as you can see, with uh, the X, uh, X mount, Fujifilm X mount, which is like most of uh, uh, Fujifilm X camera, uh, except the, the G series, which is a medium format, but the rest is all with this mount, so you can use any of their lenses, okay? And uh, this camera has an APS-C sensor, and the sensor is the same sensor as in the X-T4. And this is why many people are excited about the idea of having a small camera like this with the same as the X-T4 sensor and the same processor, the X-4. So uh, the X-T4 now is uh, the flagship of uh, Fujifilm. Before it was, it was the X-H1. But I, I'll make a separate video about uh, Fujifilm strategy because a few points I want to speak about, but in a separate video, not in this one. Also. Okay, so uh, so the X-T4 is the flagship. So it's the same sensor, same processor. The size is really good. It's 121 millimeters uh, wide, 72 millimeter high, and 32 millimeter thick. As you can see, I've got the kit lens, a 27 millimeter 2.8. But I'll speak a bit about this lens uh, in the video. It has some features like uh, sensor cleaning. Uh, I remind people who don't know or ignore or don't want to know that it has uh, it does 14 14 bit raw file because many people think that 14 bits is only for full frame, but no, most APS-C cameras do also 14 bits, so it does 14 bits. So Fujifilm is really well known for their clean, uh, good JPEG, so obviously if you want to work JPEG, you can still have the same quality of JPEG uh, they always offer, okay? So raw file is good. Uh, I think I work only in raw file, but some people like JPEG, so as always, I can guarantee you will be happy with the JPEG this camera is making, okay? It also does panoramic pictures. I'll show you some example. Also, multiple exposure picture up to nine uh, pictures in, in in one. Okay, I never like that, but it does it. Okay, and then you can also do time lapse. So now let's speak about image quality with the ISO. So the ISO goes from native from 160 up to 12,800 ISO, and then you can force it to 80, 100, 125, 25,600, and 51,200. I think up to 6,400, there's nothing to complain about. But now I'm a bit tired about speaking about ISO because uh, people, that it's always like phases. They speak about the resolution, the highest resolution is better, and they speak about the highest ISO, and it's all, smart. It's all marketing. I think that with a clean 6400 ISO, you cannot try about anything. That's fine, okay? So I think what they offer in ISO is fine. It's okay, no problem, useful. Then let's speak about shutter speed. It goes from 15 minutes up to 1 4,000th of a second. Maybe 1 4,000th is a bit short, we would like 1 8,000th, but don't forget the range of this camera, who it is aimed to, so I think 1 4,000th is enough. As all their uh, camera, uh, well, as many of Fujifilm camera, you still have a ring here with the speed, and it goes uh, from a bulb or this up to 1 4,000th, but they've added one thing, is the P mode the program mode okay many people ask for it and it's here because normally fujifilm you set here your aperture on the uh, lens then the speed here okay set the speed if you put a on the lens you get a uh, automatic aperture and uh, speed priority if you do the other way around you put a here and then the aperture here you have aperture priority if you put a on both it's fully automatic and many people were asking for the program mode okay so it's here now so it's good news for people who liked it okay so uh up to one four thousandth of a second uh, speed with mechanical shutter and if you go to the electronic shutter you can go up to one thirty two thousandth of a second so nothing to complain about well there is no integrated flash in this camera it means that no flash 
accept if you use the hot shoe and then you place an external flash or trigger with an external flash okay and uh, well I'll speak about in the conclusion about this the synchro flash is 180th of a second our thing is too low Fujifilm should start doing always one two hundred and fiftieth of a second or one two hundred i think it's too low but okay but you have the information this is uh, what is there in this camera burst rate if you want to make like this if you go with electronic shutter you get up to 30 images per second but then it crops uh, at 1.25 okay if you don't want to have any crop i think it's maximum 20 images per second in uh, electronic shutter and then if you go for mechanical shutter you get 8 frames per second I think it's enough I think 8 frames per second for what I do and most people do is more than enough but in case you want it higher you always have the electronic shutter with a crop okay but it's there they also have the pre-shot which is like the pro capture of Olympus you actually press uh, off halfway and it start making picture and then when you press completely it keep uh, shooting okay so uh, let's say you have your kid that is running to score a goal and you follow him and then he's getting close to score it so you press it starts making pictures and then you finally press and then it makes a final burst so you cannot miss a picture supposedly if you uh, don't start too soon you'll get it okay well you get 30 images per second in this case but then there's a crop of 125 also but for action photography this is a really great feature then bracketing bracketing you know that bracketing it makes several pictures you click once and it makes several pictures and then you can pick the your favorite one well fujifilm always work well with their bracketing so you have uh, exposure bracketing film simulation as you know uh, fujifilm was and still making some uh, analog films so the simulation of this film you can pick any of the 18 simulation they have uh, any three to, as a bracketing then you have uh, dynamic range bracketing, ISO bracketing, and white balance bracketing. The autofocus. Well, the autofocus, they've used the same as the X-T4 and the X-Pro3. And it's an hybrid uh, phase detection and contrast detection. And I must say it works really well. Uh, it, goes, it has also a face and eye detection. Works also really well. And in low light, it can capture up to minus 7 EV. Okay, so this is really good. Although uh, if I had a really gray sky, I wanted to try the autofocus on the clouds and it was really uh, not really precise, not much, con much contrast, all this, and it had a hard time to focus, okay? Uh, but it was really gray, gray, gray. Normally, the kind of picture you don't do. I mean, okay, unless you wanted a texture, but you would not even see real texture. But I was surprised. I would expect it to have focused better at this point. The rest was really fine. Okay, but I had to say, it. In, in case you want to make just picture of clouds, you need to know that. Okay. So let's speak about the viewfinder. The viewfinder is here on the side. This is typical uh, for a street photography. So you uh, see where uh, Fujifilm is placing this camera. You have the X-Pro3, you have the X100V, or both have made reviews, I'll leave you links here, and this one. Why do you have uh, the viewfinder on the side? Because uh, if you, uh, on street, and if you use your right eye, very often you want to make a picture like this, and you want to open your eye, to see the full scene and then maybe you decide to reframe or you see something interesting coming towards you and you want to make the picture or this so it's interesting to have uh, this on the side obviously if you use your left eye it doesn't help you okay but if you use your right eye that's that's good okay so this is the idea the viewfinder to me is too narrow uh, normally i never complain about viewfinders for me viewfinders is uh, Something to know that you're there, more or less. You okay, you frame, more or less. That's okay. Now I'm not. I'm not really as. Uh, uh, some people really want the really best viewfinder of this. I'm not really asking too much for that. But in this one, I think it's still too narrow. Uh, with glasses, it was not easy for me to see the whole picture. So I think some people are really uh, complaining about viewfinders. They will complain even more than I do about this one. Okay. I think viewfinder is a bit too narrow, my opinion, okay? Let's speak about the screen. The screen is touchable, and then you can uh, flip it this way, okay? This way, this way, okay? So if I put at the top like this, this is for people who like to make picture of their favorite subjects themselves, picture of videos, so you can do some vlogging if you want. 
So uh, I'll show you a sample, but uh, I've made this with the 27 millimeter. Uh, it is too long. So uh, with my daughter, we just uh, <laughs> jammed into the picture. Okay, but at least you can hear the sound how it goes. Testing some vlogging style uh, with Pino. And uh, the sound you're hearing is from the camera. Okay, so let's speak about video now. Uh, video uh, it does 4k uh, cine format 17 uh, 9 ratio and uh, 4k uh, 16 9 also and full hd so the speed in 4k you get 30 25 and 24p in full hd you get 60 50 30 25 and 24p then you can do a uh, high speed uh, well slow-mo <laughs> high speed picture to make slow-mo video okay so uh, you can do 240 and 200 image per second and 120 and 100 images per second frame per second uh, the maximum continuous recording is 30 minutes in full hd and 4k and if you do high speed slow-mo uh, then you get three minutes with 240 and 200 images per second or six minutes with uh, 120 and 100 frames per second. Some people will say that it's really short, three and six minutes, but uh, in slow mo, you don't do your your dog running during during uh, one hour, obviously. So I think three and six minutes for slow mo is really perfect. It's not a problem, and uh, uh, you don't overheat the camera. So I think that's okay. What really bothered me about video? Well, this camera has a Photography camera is great. This camera as a video camera is great. But if you want to switch from one to the other, this is not good. They, they've removed, uh, well, removed in place, a proper button for video recording. You actually use the same shutter. But you don't even have a button to, set, to change, uh, to switch from picture to video. You need to go to the drive mode. So uh, it's really slow. It's time consuming. Uh, if you're a photographer, you'll be happy with it. If you're a videographer, you'll be happy with it. But if you do both, that's a problem. Because if you want, uh, I make pictures, I say, oh yeah, now I want to make a short take, a video take. Then you have to do that. So it's true that you can use this function button. You can actually set as you want and use it to switch from one thing to another if you want. But then this one was good because you could change the ISO directly from here. So that's a problem they remove too many things uh, so they should have a couple of extra uh, function buttons so i could have this one that could actually use to switch to video or not and still use the trigger if i want for for photo or video but and use it as a function button you could use it for that and you have another button here for example to add to this one so that's a problem is uh, they've great they have really good uh, video features but it's complicated tax system. So imagine you're driving a Ferrari, okay? Your first gear, second, third, fourth, fifth. You want to go to sixth, and where's the sixth? Oh, it's in the back next to the engine. I need to open the, the bonnet and the send, switch to sixth uh, gear. This is stupid, this is stupid. You would think I'm crazy. Well, this is what I feel. If I'm making pictures, I say, well, now a video. Yeah, it's gone. Okay, so that's no good. I don't understand why they made that. You know, this is really a big mistake. I think they went too minimalist. Okay, so film simulation. They have 18 film simulation like Provia, Velvia, all this analog film simulation. And uh, before it was really hard if you worked in RAW file to get this simulation on your computer. After you had to work in JPEG, but now for some time now uh, if you still hear this even in some of my past videos forget about this now you can uh, using Lightroom or using Capture One you actually get the profile you got from this film simulation even if you work in raw files so no problem okay connectivity connectivity is good connectivity is good you have Wi-Fi Bluetooth USB-C then you have micro HDMI and a connector a jack connector for a microphone there is no jack connector for headphone, but thank you Fujifilm, they've put an adapter you actually put in the USB-C and then you can plug a jack from a headphone in there and listen, okay? So they included this, which, which is incredible. Uh, Fujifilm is not charging for something, they included, well, probably in the price. It's not the case of their charger. If you speak about their charger, there is no charger. I mean, 
I'm really mad about Fuji with this charger policy. I mean, a few years ago, they started to remove the chargers that you would take your battery, place it in the in the charger, and you could use a second battery and keep shooting. So they removed these chargers. It was optional. You, they, you had a plug-in-the-wall charger and then USB to the camera. But now, not even this. Now they give you a cable, just a cable. You can use your smartphone charger or any charger you have at home to charge. And I think... This is stupid because not everyone has several chargers or they lost it or they broke or uh, and, and this is really greedy not to put a charger. Um, I don't even speak a charger you put in the wall and you plug in the USB. Put me a proper charger where I can place a battery in there. Don't sell it optional. This is really greedy and I think this is not serious. I've complained about this about some Sony, some uh, Nikon bridges and now even top of the range uh, uh, Fujifilm camera doing this. I don't understand this. This is not good. This is not good. I'll speak about it in another video. The battery is placed here next to the SD card, okay? And the battery has a life, uh, uh, life, uh, life, uh, long life, okay? If you charge again, but, I mean, you can do on one charge about 460 pictures. I like to have 500 pictures, but well, then given the, the size of this camera, I think it's acceptable. And if you do 4K, you get 45 minutes, and Full HD, you get 75 minutes. Battery is okay. It could be a bit better, but I think it's acceptable. So now let's speak about the pros and the cons of this camera. But just before I'll speak a bit about the lens, okay? The lens that comes, the kit lens, is a 27 mm 2.8. 27 mm is equivalent of 40 mm in full frame. This is a focal range I've never liked. My taste. It's always too long or too wide, okay? So, uh, I think it's not good. I prefer, if it's thought for street photography, put me the 23 millimeter, which is equivalent of 35 millimeter, okay? 23 is fine. And then, please, not 2.8, 2.0, or even less, but 2.0. 23 millimeter, 2.0. The lens would be a bit larger, that's right. But I think it would be better as a kit lens, okay? More attractive. But it's true that this lens is, the price of the kit is really good. This lens has good quality. I don't complain about the quality of the lens. I complain about the choice of the lens, okay? I think a 23mm 2.8 would be better. Or offer a different kit with this option, okay? But the 27mm, I think, is too narrow or too long. This is... I don't like this uh, this focal length, honestly. Okay, 40 millimeters. I don't like it in anything. Okay, <laughs> like 35 or 50, but this I don't like. Or 24 or 28, but 40 I never liked it. So now the pros and the cons. Well, the pro, the size is brilliant. The size is really good. The weight is really good, and the price is really good. The autofocus, except the cloud story, it does. Really okay. I think the autofocus is really good. The face detection works, eye detection works, nothing to complain. The image quality, whether it's photography or uh, videography, it's good. I mean, in video, it's surprisingly good, this camera. So nothing to complain about that. Now let's speak about the cons. Well, what I said before, the lack of uh, some function, uh, function button which should be at two more, I think. They also removed the typical button here where you had a single shot, continuous shot, and manual focus. I think this is a mistake. They should have kept it. They went too simple. And when we speak about too simple, if you compare to the XE3 that had a small bump here for your finger, small grip, they removed it too. You don't have this grip anymore. So you have an optional grip, uh, not, uh, really a stupid grip, not a battery grip, stupid grip, basic grip, that gives you a better uh, grip I have a better sale, okay. Here, it's really good, but this accessory is 100 uh, euros. I think it's far too expensive for what it is. And you have also a thumb rest. You can plug into your hot shoe here and put to, to rest your thumb. It's also 100 euros. I think this is crazy. 200 euros in two accessories. This is crazy, honestly. I think this is. they should have kept the small bump that here to uh, get a better grip on the camera. The thing is uh, also the no flash. Think about who is buying this camera. Not only street photographers. And the, the, this camera is an uh, entry-level camera. Uh, well, just above entry-level camera. They have the XA before. 
but then after it's XT over so it's hard to decide where it's exactly placed okay because Fujifilm is a bit of a nightmare to know where the camera are going but you would think that for 100 euros extra you get an XS10 so you think that yeah but the XS10 the screen is different they have IBIS this one has no IBIS all this so is it worth buying this one and not the XS10 and this is a big question is this is camera this camera is the typical cult camera some people will love it some people will hate it why because there are things that are not logical and things that are great so it's hard to decide so i think this camera is for people who really know what they're buying okay the typical uh, street or traveling photographer that want to travel light uh, doesn't want to have the x100v because it's has no changeable interchangeable uh, lenses so it doesn't want to be stuck one day wants a longer lens or wider lens it doesn't want to have this add-on lens either so okay but the uh, xv uh, x100v is weather sealed this one is not um, for what i've read this one is not so it's difficult to say okay so i think this is for the person who would like a street photography and not on everything, uh, a camera for everything, okay? Street photography or reportage photography or travel photography. And it's not interesting in a really long lens because on this kind of small body would be a bit like uh, miscompensated. But I think these people will love this camera. People who want to be jumping back and forwards between video and photo that be some kind of a problem and this is a big mistake i think because many travel vloggers would buy this camera more than the X, uh, X, xs10 maybe uh, because it's small it's nice uh, people like flip up screen like this instead of uh, sideways so i think uh, this is really for people who know what they're buying okay but not everyone will know what they, they, they are buying and some people would prefer the X-Pro 3 maybe but they will miss this screen so I'll make a special video about my opinion about uh, Fujifilm strategy okay but do I recommend this camera yes yes honestly if this is what you want a street camera or a street photography camera or reportage camera uh, you don't really need a flash uh you don't want the price of an x pro 3 or the size you want to be able to swap lenses i think this is a really good option but if you buy it as a universal camera this is not the right choice i think there are other choices in fujifilm yeah, don't speak about competition let's speak about fujifilm okay so i recommend this camera no doubt for people who know what it is and what it is for yes no doubt this is a great camera for what it does okay what it offers and the price uh, relation price quality is really good so yes i think this camera i cannot say it's no good because i think it's really good but it has some limitation that could have been easily avoided and this camera could be easily a lot better okay so well this is what it is so thank you very much photosura for lending me the camera thank you very much to you for watching the video if you feel it may interest other people please share it on social networks if you have not done yet please subscribe to my youtube channel the small button down here a social bell if you click on the bell get notified when i upload a new video my website erigible.com if you have any question can leave a comment below i also leave you links of my gear on amazon also links to other part of my youtube channel also links to my paypal account it wants, in case he wants to make a donation so please take care of yourself and see you soon bye